Zero Accounting Software 2023 Pay Payroll Taxes. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the patting is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation get great guitars duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it right click in the tab up top again so we can duplicate again back to the tab to the middle accounting drop down we want the balance sheet this is a slightly modified balance sheet but if you don't have that one you can open the standard balance sheet tab and to the right accounting drop down income statement we want the comparative income statement but if you don't have that one you can open the normal income statement the comparative income statement showing the current month february and the prior month of january let's go back to the balance sheet we're now going to be thinking about paying off the payroll taxes that we have collected in a prior presentation we could, which we can see down here as a liability now let's take a quick recap of the flowchart for the payroll, the process of payroll, because it is complex, mainly because the government steps in and makes it so. So if we go over to our flowchart, which is a screenshot of a QuickBooks desktop flowchart, but we're just using it to look at the flow of the forms here. We're on the payroll or employee cycle, remembering that if it wasn't for the government, if it wasn't for taxes, paying our employees would basically be just another vendor type of activity. We would shake hands. We would uh, come to an agreement based on the trust and faith in our each other's good names. And then we would, once the job is done or weekly, we would pay the employees. But it's way more complicated than that for most locations. And it the complications will differ from location to location because there's generally gonna be a lot of laws related to employee, employer interactions on a human resources side, as well as possibly a payroll tax side. So I'm generally looking at the United States here, noting uh, and looking at the federal side of things, noting that even in the United States, the states will have different state laws. Uh, but when, when you look at the taxes in general, remember that there's no really new taxes if you learn basically all the kinds of taxes, then it's just a matter of which one does the government think would be best for a particular situation, right? So uh, in our case, we're going through the payroll cycle, which starts out with us basically paying the employees either 
whatever we choose, weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, or monthly, we are paying monthly. And we're gonna imagine, imagine in our situation that after paying the employees and withholding the taxes from them, taking it out of their paychecks and our tax responsibilities now being due at the point in time we've processed the paychecks, that we are then going to pay those taxes and we're gonna pay them you know, by the end of the next month. Normally you would pay them you know, pretty soon after you process the payroll, right? So that's gonna be the general system. So we're gonna say we pay monthly in our case. So we've paid one month of uh, payroll and now we're gonna pay the taxes in February for January's payroll that has been processed. And then if we were to continue this in March, we would pay off you know, the February withholdings that we had. That's gonna be the cycle we have. Notice that that cycle could differ depending on where you are, what's the rules for that particular location, and what's the payment structure that you have set up, and possibly based on how much uh, actual payroll taxes that uh, that you owe. Uh, okay, so that's the, that's the general idea. Now note that if you were processing the payroll through uh, the payroll system, Gusto would help you with that process. And also just to note on top of that, you also have the quarterly forms which should be just reporting forms, 941s quarterly, the 940 at the end of the year, and then your W-2s and your W-3s at, at the end of the year, which is kind of piled on top of the normal kind of accounting need just in terms of logistics to get the payments out and comply with human resources laws and the withholdings. All right, so if you have like, a, like Gusto integrated, then it may help you out to kind of process the calculation of the payroll as you have it have it due but if you have a third party that's processing your payroll then uh, you have to think about how you want to pull that stuff into your accounting system and sometimes there's different ways that you can make that a little bit more simplified of a transaction before we do that though i'm going to make a quick adjustment to the payroll transaction we entered last time because i want this to be tying out to what we have on our bank reconciliations and so we need to make a, a little bit of an adjustment here. So we're gonna say the FIT for Adam Hamilton is gonna be 720. And, this, and then we had an adjustment to social security as well that we have to pick up here. The social security on both the employee and employer side. So I'm gonna go into this check for Adam Hamilton and just make that adjustment. And so I'm going to go back on over here and say, let's drill down into the checking account and find that check. Now, again, this is a kind of adjustment that is fairly easy to make if the actual payroll is being processed by a payroll processor outside of the system. If you were using Gusto internally to process the payroll, then you would probably have to like delete void the check and re-enter it to make sure that all of your uh, reports are tying out properly. So we're gonna scroll on down and say, where was that check? There it is. Adam Hamilton uh, spent money form. So we'll go into that and make a slight adjustment here. So here's our new uh, journal entry for Atom. So payroll expense should be 4583.33. So we're gonna say, all right, 4583. 0.33 that's the same payroll liability the sum of these three is now 107062 so uh but i have to add this one to it hold on a sec let me change my formula here i did add that to it i have to go to these four with that adjustment 103462 okay 103462 so this is going to be payroll liability Oh, I have to edit it. Hold on. Edit the transaction. Now I can't remember the number. Negative. Come on. My memory can't remember this one. Oh, here it is. Negative 1034 point C point uh, 62. I knew that. 1034 point 62. So now we've got a net check decrease in the, the checking account 354871. So that's going to be the 354871, the payroll liability 103462, and the 458333 of the expense. All right, I'm going to update that. And then we're also going to update the journal entry. 
So let's go accounting drop down back into the balance sheet. And I'm going to drill back down to find the journal entry that we entered. And that's going to be this little transaction we did down here for this 36 side on this side. So th the one we just adjusted, adjusted for the FIT, which was 700 before. Now we made it 720 and the $36 adjustment, adjusting the net check. All right. So now let's go back in and say the journal entry uh, was an adjustment. Let's take this from the income statement side of things because we had down here the payroll tax expense. That'll be the easiest place to find it. So let's go into those payroll taxes and we're going to say that here's a manual journal entry let's go into that and see if we can hit the drop down and edit that thing if i may and we'll just change that number to so this needs to pick up the total let me sum up the total this way here so it picks up that adjustment some of those three boom some of these three okay 498.22 498.22 and then this one needs to also be 498.22 all right slight adjustment apologies for uh for that but that should help us out when we get to our bank reconciliation course or section back to the accounting drop down let's go back into our income statement i'm going to pick up the comparative income statement report and so there we have it so now now we're going to be paying off the payroll liability going back to the balance sheet tab and we have withheld withholdings and we need to go go in and pay off uh these payroll liabilities that we have withheld now we're just going to be paying off the first month of payroll liabilities and then the second month of payroll liabilities we will be paying in the following month if you have a payroll provider doing a lot of the payroll services like the 941s, the 940s, the W2s, the W3s, and so on, then our question here on the bookkeeping side is, what do I need to put into my system and how is the easiest way I can do that to make the bookkeeping process as easy and automated possibly as possible? So remember that if I, if I go back to my worksheet, I could enter this information from the third party provider as they give me this information in basically a worksheet format. As I enter the information into the system, I could record the payroll liabilities as we are doing here, as we enter them into, as the payroll process goes by. However, I might come up with an easier system. Remember that you could say, well, I'm just gonna try to automate everything on the zero side of things, make it a cash based type of system, even though payroll usually forces me outside of a cash based system because of the withholdings, but I'll just wait till everything clears the bank account possibly, and then just record it as uh, an expense when it clears the bank account. So everything related to payroll, once it clears the bank account, I record basically as an expense and that way, when these payroll liabilities actually get paid, you're just going to record it when it clears the bank account as an expense at that point in time. Therefore, you'll have a timing difference between when the when the actual uh, taxes were accrued or incurred and when you paid them. But at the end of the day, it'll it'll clear the bank. And then at the end of the year, you might be able to shore up any problems you have as of a period of time for example, for taxes or external reporting purposes with a CPA firm or tax firm. So that's your, your network of people that might help your bookkeeping system to be formatted in such a way where you can try to automate everything and be more in a cash-based system while still making periodic adjustments possibly at the end of the year for, uh, for taxes or financial reporting. But we're just gonna write the check here. So we'll just write the check uh, and we'll make a couple checks because we want to basically uh, tie into once again our bank uh, reconciliation reports. So I'm going to hit the drop down and we're going to say we're going to have a spend money form, spend money form. And we're going to say we want to write Oh, one more thing. If I go to the balance sheet over here, uh, this liability account, if I go into payroll liability and I go into this item, then we are basically going to be paying off everything that happened up through january right so we're going to be paying up uh 
up up through here here's the the running balance so we'll pay a couple checks because we had a couple checks depending on whether it was fit or social security and medicare but we'll pay basically this amount and then we'll be left with what was accrued in uh february that's going to be the idea all right let's go back on over checking account we're going to write a check and i'm going to make a new vendor i'm just going to call it irs if you were uh set up you'd have to pay the the irs in whatever way they want to be paid which would probably be in some kind of electronic uh type of system but uh, so just be aware of that we're going to just write a check for our practice problem 228 and we'll make a check number for it and and then we need an account down here which is going to be that payroll liability account uh, that's a description uh, we'll say the amount is going to be 1080 and then payroll liability payroll uh, wages payable no payroll tax no uh, federal payroll liability that's the one so we're gonna have two checks that will then tie out to the amount that was due at the end of January uh, and this was basically kind of breaking out the FIT and the which is the federal income tax and the Social Security and Medicare, the FICA taxes. So I'm going to say, let's say, save and add another uh, check number. I think it should be 1024. So I skipped a couple checks. Again, if you don't have the check number, uh, that's... Uh, oh, hold on a sec. I don't have the right date here. What happened to the date? I swear I changed it. I'm going to close this out. This should be as of 228, Feb 28. Don't do that again. Get the date right. Save and another, and then 1024. Okay. And then we'll just save it. And let's do another. This one, I'm just also gonna say it's going to the IRS, the government. And let's get the date right this time, 228, Feb 28. And then I'll make it a check. And then we're going to say this is going to be for 82.52. And the account, once again, is going to be the payroll liability account. Payroll tax, payroll wages payable, federal payroll liability. That's the one we want. Now, that was basically, that's basically going to be for the Medicare side of things. And then we'll do one more for the Social Security. So I'm going to say save and add another may i have another thank you may i have another unit price needs to be there okay this needs to be 82.521 and 8252 okay so there we have it okay let's try it again save and another i think the check number is correct date looks correct let's save it all right irs one more time Let's do it again and let's make this Feb 28 get the date right if we could and then we'll bring it on down and say this is going to be for 865.94 account payroll liability federal again I just clicked on it and it didn't do it you saw me click on that federal payroll liability and it just disappeared all right, so then that looks good. Let's go ahead and just save this one and then we'll check it out. So we'll say save it. And then let's go to the balance sheet and let's go back I will, back to the balance sheet here so we can update the balance sheet before we start drilling down. Update, we're gonna have our three checks in the checking account. So that should be fairly straight forward. So we're gonna go into there and we've got our three checks that we wrote down here on uh, 3228. Uh, uh, th these two are in June again, for goodness gracious, Spectrum. Let me, let me see if I can change those. That's gonna bother me. That's gonna mess things up. So let's see if we can adjust that, edit, uh and then edit and it won't let me change the date oh oh all right i'm not gonna worry about it right now 
That's not where I focus on the task at hand. We're gonna go down and say that we wrote these checks to the IRS. So there's one uh, that we wrote to the IRS. Here's uh, an IRS and there's the IRS. Okay, let's go back. And then we're gonna go down to the liabilities, payroll liabilities and go into that. And let's check out these three amounts that we wrote down here. There's the three checks. If I pull out the trustee calculator for some calculations, we've got, uh, we've got this one, 82.52 plus this one, 865.94 plus the 1080. And that adds up to the uh, 2028. And you can see that that is where we stand at the end of January. So the general idea is we, we process payroll for January. We incurred liabilities that we withheld of 2028-46 that we're just looking at the federal taxes at this point, Social Security, Medicare, and federal income tax for the employee. Then we paid and then we processed the second payroll, adding more liability. And then we paid the amount that is due. So we paid January's liability, leaving us with just what is left in February uh, that has been incurred for the liability, which is of course, this one, the 1034.62 plus the 498.22 plus the 543.6, which gives us to the balance of 70 or 207644, the liability that we still owe at this time. All right, and so no impact on the income statement because uh, because we, we were just paying off the liability, we processed the payroll and affected the income statement last time. All right, so let's, well, well we made an adjustment uh, that, but this, this journal entry didn't affect the income statement. Those checks didn't affect it. Okay, let's duplicate it and let's open up the reports and the drop down. We wanna go into the reports. We wanna open up the trustee trial balance. I'm gonna type in trial balance and open that one up. We'll change the range up top, drop down, custom range, bringing it up to 2023, the end of it and update. So this is where we stand at this point in time. Uh, if you were on last time, your numbers tied out, but they're off this time, then try changing the date range. Often it's a date range kind of issue. We made some adjustments to the checking account. We made some adjustments to the payroll related accounts, which include the payroll liability account and the tax account for the wages and the payroll tax expense.